Good evening, everyone. My name is Laura Sparks. I'm the president of the Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art, and it is truly my honor to welcome you here this evening. <laughs> Whether you are here in our great hall or joining us by live stream, we are together as a community for a very special program. We will always be here with Ty Defoe in commemoration of Indigenous Peoples Day. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge that the Cooper Union stands on the sacred ancestral homeland of the Lenape people. The word Lenape means original people. And of course, the name Manhattan comes from the Lenape word Manahata, or Island of Many Hills. The Lenape are Manhattan's indigenous people, the first New Yorkers, and three distinct Lenape groups inhabited the island in the 16th century, the Canarsie, Sapohanican, and Manhattan. Astor Place, just outside this building, was called Kintakoying, or Crossroads of Three Nations. It was the point at which three major trails intersected and was a central meeting point for these groups, a place where, for hundreds of years, people gathered to trade and discuss the issues among them. In this very space, on that same land, the Great Hall has also served as a destination for discussion and debate since it opened as a gathering place for New Yorkers in 1858. It's a place where the issues of the day have been raised, debated, and influenced. When in 1859, Peter Cooper founded the Cooper Union, he did so on the premise that free access to education and civic engagement, regardless of race, socioeconomic status, or gender, would be central to the growth and betterment of individuals and to positive change in the world. Today, as a college with distinguished schools of art, architecture, and engineering, and a core focus on the humanities and social sciences across disciplines, we continue to pursue his vision. Around 1870, here in this great hall, the messages of Native American leaders were presented. Audiences heard from Lewis Downing, chief of the Cherokee Nation, and Arapaho chief, Little Raven. And at the invitation of Peter Cooper himself, Sioux chief, Red Cloud, addressed New York City audiences twice here, advocating against the unjust appropriation of his people's land. The injustices suffered by indigenous peoples and marginalized communities everywhere continue to inflict pain. They must be acknowledged, they must inspire and inform the kind of collective work that brings about change, and they must be prevented from happening again. We have a responsibility to this generation and to those before and after us to stories and histories, the atrocities that were hidden or whitewashed, and to advocate for change that engenders equality. We must move forward as a united community of people and celebrate the differences and diversity among us. That is what our program this evening is all about tonight. To get us started, please join me in welcoming Sage Addington. Sage is, Sage is a third year student here at Cooper Union in our School of Art. They are a multimedia artist and graphic designer. Sage is also a member of the Navajo Nation and joins us tonight to share their voice on the significant issues that must be raised about the experiences of indigenous communities, not just on a single day of observance, but every day. Sage. Yate Shidina Sage Addington Yinishia Ostahi Nishne Adone Nishlinigi A Tachitni Nishne Filagana Bashis Chin Sitnajini Dashiche Filagana Dashinale Akotego A 
Sifke Nishne Do Nat Nijoje de Neshant. It is good, my friends. Sage Addington is what I am called. I am a student. I come from the red running into water people, the black street wood people, and the English people. I am from Gallup, New Mexico. I am thankful to have the opportunity to speak to you today as a member of the Navajo Nation and as a student of the Cooper Union. As a beacon of innovation and the shaper of so much creative expression, Cooper Union is positioned to lend the weight of its institutional power to the uplifting of indigenous voices. I am glad to be here as that work begins. Yet as I am honored to have the privilege of addressing you on this celebration, I am overwhelmed. I also feel the weight of responsibility and mourning. Indigenous Peoples Day honors the way that indigenous peoples continue to thrive in spite of an ongoing genocide, but it also draws light upon that oppression. While we hold this day of celebration, it's also a day of mourning, and I cannot help but feel guilty for taking a moment to rest. How can one find celebration in the middle of a war? We must acknowledge the historical injustices visited upon the indigenous peoples of the Americas, and we must acknowledge that these injustices have not ceased. Indigenous people are still here, and we will always be here. So I ask you to acknowledge us, not just on seasonal holidays, but every day. I ask you to see indigenous peoples as part of the fabric of your community, and to help us carry the weight of our shared history and our shared futures. Relatives fight to counter the harms inflicted in the past and the current aggressions visited upon them and their children with every concern for how it will shape the world that we will all have to live in as time reveals the impact of our choices. Here are some of the issues that they must confront. This past September 30th was the National Day of Remembrance for boarding schools. Over the summer, the graves of 6,509 indigenous children across the United States and Canada have been revealed, and the numbers are still growing. This is not ancient history. My own grandparents attended boarding schools. Many survivors of the horrors of the boarding and residential school era still live with that trauma, hoping that they can find a way to preserve their children and grandchildren from living their pain. There is an epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous people and sexual violence. One in three indigenous women will have experienced rape or an attempted rape in their lifetime. 48.8% of Native American women will have been stalked by a non-indigenous individual within their lifetime. And Native American women are 10 times more likely to be murdered than the national average. Murder is also the ninth leading cause of death amongst Native American men. Man camps established for non-indigenous pipeline workers not only bring sex traffickers and other abusers to the borders of tribal nations, they also threaten precious water sources in the name of crude oil and fossil fuels. It is not just my life or indigenous lives that are at stake, it is yours as well. Indigenous people's fates are intermingled with the fate of all Americans in the battle against climate change. The Dakota Access Pipeline Line three and line five threaten indigenous sovereignty and the health of the land, threaten multiple fresh water sources in the United States. It is our non-tribal relatives, neighbors, and descendants who will suffer as we fail to protect them. Closer to us, the North Brooklyn pipeline threatens black and brown bodies. At the forefront of these environmental battles are indigenous activists and other land protectors. These are only a few of the dire issues confronting indigenous peoples today as they continue to engage in the fight to thrive, not just survive. But the battle isn't just physical, it is spiritual, emotional, and unending. I am worried that what I say to you today will go in vain and you will either not hear me or forget that the war I am asking you to join is not just seasonal. I encourage you all to recall that the indigenous American is like you, an American, and to do something with the awareness that you now have. I urge all of you to identify ways you can redistribute money, energy, and resources in service of the indigenous communities that are closest to you. I beg you to prioritize resources created by indigenous people to amplify native sources. Donate to indigenous organizations and relief funds. 
actively support indigenous rights by actually advocating for indigenous bodies, like contacting your state representatives and telling them to protect the Indian Child Welfare Act. Educate yourself on indigenous rights and issues. Read indigenous news sources and don't wait to be spoon-fed the information from indigenous content creators. Create platforms that amplify indigenous voices by working with indigenous peoples or by offering up other spaces that they can occupy. In this space, where education, innovation, and expression are sacred, I ask you to use the tools you have to engage with the voices, experiences, history, and the current system of, systems of oppression that face my people. These moments of love, expression, and rest are sacred and crucial, but it is under the terms that you join the fight that I am truly able to celebrate. The decisions we make today will have an impact long after we are gone, Thank you. Take care of yourself for your people. And now welcoming Ty Defoe. Buju, Halito, Chimai, Sego, Vlanutak, Kwam Gamel Mohemo, How, Malo Lava, Yoto, Anin in Dinue Maganaduk, Osio, Hauka, Akwai, Ajichishi Mashikuna, Yat E, Wanikisa, Ostaiga, saying hello to you, Halito Hinks J, from my backyard, from my tree here in Oklahoma. I live in Minnewaking. I live up here in the northern Catskills. I live in Bogota, Colombia. I live on Gabrielino Tongva land. I am a child of Timwana Nui Akiwa and currently living on Tongva lands. Today I am living on the lands of many tribes, including the Piscataway chiefdom. And I live here on the island of Manahata. Oma Anishinaabe Akinda, Chicago Ijinakade, and Dayenda Nungum. And I live in Bobancha the place of foreign languages, what colonizers have attempted to rename New Orleans. I live on the lands of the Tongva, Keech, Gabrielino, and Chumash people, now called Santa Monica, California. I live in my ancestral tribal homelands, Kumai Umut, in San Diego County. I currently live in Northern Virginia, D.C. area, which is the ancestral homeland of the Piscataway. I live in Muskego, Wisconsin. I live in Muskego, Wisconsin. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My heritage is from Mashpee, and I live in Mashpee. I live in Ganyuage, Cleveland, Ohio, that place by the river. I live in West Dallas, Wisconsin. I live in West Dallas, Wisconsin. I live in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I live eight miles from Manhattan. I now live in the homelands of the Kaw Nation also called Lawrence, Kansas. Currently living in Tempe, Arizona. The ancestral homelands of the Akamil, Aatam, and Peeposh peoples. I live in Boston. I am from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I live in Anchorage, Alaska, the homelands of the Denina Athabascan people. I live in Lenape, Kohing, Matahata. Home is home is home is home is a good mind, a strong spirit. Home is where the land meets the Pacific Ocean. Home to me is mud, it is moss, it is music. Home is where I connect with my culture. Home is relationship. Is a relocation upon a relocation. Home is love, unity, strength. Home is safety, community. It is trees and our wildlife and our water. The earth that made me, the roots that tie me, the ancestors and the wind where aloha is embraced and practiced, and tautua, or service, is instilled within the people. Home is where the grave of your great-grandmother's grandmother is sighted. Home is the heart. Home is where the dust under your feet makes your body feel most alive. Home is love, family, ocean, 
sovereign. Home is language, history, light. Uweya yusti, like a creek. Welcoming fun and family. Home is our children. Home is us. Home to me is water, creation, everything that gives us life. Home is where the spirit lives. Home is a blessing. Strength, humble. Native land. Home is belonging, reciprocity, interdependence. Home is where my children are. Home is where my ancestors are. Mashpee means beautiful waters, family, good food, and resilience. What is important to me right now is the safety of my family, my culture, my community. We are responsible to our ancestors, and the land holds us accountable. I am here to share stories that uplift Indigenous perspectives and bring healing to our communities. We'll be here active until our sacred sites everywhere all over Mother Earth are protected, are held sacred, and held safe. We take care of the waters. We'll keep moving until there are no more stolen sisters. We will begin to function in unity with Mother Earth and all her living beings. I dream of solidarity. I dream of healing. What is important to me is preserving our life, defending our faith, the unborn and those who have walked down. We can't stop vocalizing and addressing the cultural genocide and erasure of our missing and murdered indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people. Hashtag Pacific Islanders for Black Lives Matter. Hashtag climate is changing, why can't we? Hashtag like the ocean, we will rise. Know the truth, find the truth. We are made up of many, many nations, tribes, villages, languages, and communities across Turtle Island. Respect the sacredness of Mother Earth. We are dedicated to her waters, her lands, her air. Lift up the voices and the work of two-spirit and indigiqueer individuals. Hear us, see us, know us. I am here to demand basic human rights and equality for all of humanity. Anyway, do hang. I'm lifting up indigenous and black solidarity against settler state sanctioned violence. What is important to me right now is standing in solidarity with our black brothers and sisters. Black lives matter. The killing of black men in America, the killing of indigenous men and women in America, the killing of black women in America, all of these things, all of these things, are part of what's killing us. This pandemic, this virus, I can't breathe. Our underlying health conditions brought on by colonization. Right now, what is important to me is that our land, our ability to govern ourselves is protected and that this right is protected for all tribal nations. Our children need to hear their language in order to learn about the ways of the land so that they can unapologetically be their whole selves and call forward the confidence and peace that lives inside of them. I would like to see stronger environmental laws. My dream is to have a future with racial respect. As a kid speaking for my generation, my dream is to go out and feel safe and to be treated with respect. We were here. 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 We are still here. We are still here. We are still here. Us, Nathaniel. We are still here. We are still here. We are still here. We are still here. We will always be here. We will always be here. Kapish machimi, Nathaniel. We will always be here. 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 We will always be here.
Let's see all John Henry is a lot easier to say. Tonight, we do something never done here before, which is start out acknowledging the spirits and letting them know we are here and what our intentions are. That's what the words I say in my language will be. That's what they'll say. It'll ask for a good life for everybody. I could attempt to do that partially in Chalagya and partially in English or partially in Nde in the song, but they know our languages. They are more familiar. And so that's so I'm letting you know what I'm saying to you. I'm also letting you know that it's not our way as indigenous people. One of the few pan-Indian things you might possibly be able to say is that we don't talk about people behind their backs. So I am asking the spirits, the powers, the beings that watch us all the time to turn their faces towards us and to be present for us. Because frankly, we need all the help we can get in this world. Two legates have done a really interesting job of ignoring their original instructions. And it's time to fess up, step up, and do differently. So we start here. So I have given, I've given a voice to the East. I've sent a rattle to the East, and both Don and Opalanyatet will take that rattle, and they'll call the East when I sing for it. And I've sent a voice to the North, and Tana Speranto will take those paddles to the North, and she will make a voice when I sing for those folks. I will take care of the West myself, because that's more or less where they are. Because you know directions are cat a corner in this room, right? Go figure. And I've given a voice to the South, to my brother, Jake Hart. And I know that he will call for, he will call forth that voice in the South. And I'm asking you all, to stand up and participate. And if you are unable to stand up for what any reason, I ask that you at least hold your hand in the direction as we start. And you might want to roll back the mic a little bit because when I start singing, it's going to feedback even more than right now. So first we face the east. And we ask them to hear us. And we turn in the way I was taught, and we go the way 
the spirit moves. We turn and face the north. turn and we faced my relatives in the West. So many beautiful beings in the West. My clan in the West. So many beautiful beings in the West. And now we turn and we face the south. The weather we're leaving behind, the warmth of the south. Or maybe with climate change, the weather we're gonna see a whole lot more of. So we ask the south for help with that. If we do hit we start here the dust, Alejandro, the other on his story. up our hands to the sky father, sky mother, sky being, all being. We saw
Das geht ja, dann hat er hier schon eine Juwane, hier schon die Hemmuski, ja, der Kalabiski, Schahuri, Schahuri, Schwedsch, ja, die Kali, die Kali. Nie, wo du hier skilli, Hani. Nie, wo du hier. Anas Gayale, Anagea, Ali. Anas Gayale, Anagea. Ali, nie, Junsti. Ali. Schau, wo du so liege, Ali, wo du hier den Nadna, Anaduli. Uthinigida and Skilia honey. Udu he Lena Donha Ibohida Anna Tuli. He the dust the Ali Halstella knee at a dolly's toady. Wado, 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 Wado. Now scoop up those prayers and pat yourself down with them. Pat yourself down, just pat yourself and don't forget to touch the ground if you please, because it's nice to be grounded in this world. Shuna, and my hands go up to each of my sisters and brothers and other sisters out there, because we don't do this alone. One may know the words, another knows the beat, Another knows the song. We don't do any of this alone. Shuna. Aho boo to the Juni G Boo Juni G Boo Juni G Hey say goalie tied the four indigenous cars was swagging and doing your bomb, a gizzard and do them. Wabunung, Jawunung, Naga, Binung, Menoki, Wed, and Nung, Miguetchka, Ega, Kenegago, a bugging in a gardego, marking. Miguetchki, Jamanado, a dapanan, a ow, a sema. Miguetchki, Jamanado, Miguetchki, Jamanado, Miguetchki, Jamanado. Aha, hey, ya, hey. Yaha hey, ya hey. Yaha hey, ya hey. Holy wah. Yeah, people ask me, Ty, what does holy wah mean in indigenous? And I'm, uh, it actually means holy cow. 
right? It's uh, that native slang here of uh, New York City, right, Matahata. <laughs> a long time ago, as the story was told to me, once the earth was covered in water, and this story took place a long time ago in this young person's village when all of the animals could talk to each other. When the great mother earth in Aki, this water, all of the animals, they didn't know how they were going to get good food to eat, clean water to drink, and land to live on. So all of the animals, they got really stressed out. They said, oh no, what are we going to do? We don't have any good food to eat, clean water to drink, and land to live on. There were no bodegas to go to. <laughs> So all of the animals got together. They huddled in a circle together and they listened. They listened and they heard Gichimani do this great mystery, right? This great mystery, Gichimani do said, get a piece of earth and put it on the turtle's back. And there you will have land to live on, clean water to drink and good food to eat, okay? All of the animals said, oh no, how are we going to do that? Well, there was an animal, okay, an animal named Makwa, the bear, right? The strongest of all of the animals stood up and said, animals, do not stress out. I will save you. I am the strongest of all of the animal kingdom. I work out at Blink Fitness, right? And New York Sports Club, really giant of a bear, Makwa. All of the animals got very excited. And so Makwa stood on the edge of a log, peered into that water, right? Bent down on one knee, took their bulging bicep and scooped their arm down to the bottom part of that water, got that piece of earth and started to rise to the top surface of the water. Now, what do you think happened to that small piece of Aki, that earth, just as Makwa was rising to the surface? Bloop, 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 bloop. All the way down to the bottom of the water. Oh no! What are we going to do? All of the animals said. Well, have no fear, an animal spoke up. And this animal had large teeth in the front of their mouth, right? It had um, those glasses from Warby Parker, those thick black glasses that people wear in New York City, right? This animal was known as um, a mick, a mick, the beaver. And you would see thousands of them on the Hudson and East River. And to this day, there was a sighting of one. But a mix spoke up in the story and said, listen, all of you animals, I am the smartest in all of the animal kingdom, okay? I will make sure that you have good food to eat, clean water to drink, and land to live upon. All of the animals got very excited about a mick saving their lives. So a mick stood on the edge of that same log, right? took a leap into the air and started swimming and 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 swimming all the way down to the bottom part of that water got that piece of earth put it on its back and started swimming and 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 just as a mick was reaching the top surface of that water what do you think happened to that piece of aki Bloop, 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 bloop. All the way back down to the bottom of the water, that piece of Aki slipped off the back of a mixed shiny coat onto its tail all the way back down. Oh no! All of the animals said, how are we going to have good food to eat, clean water to drink, and land to live upon if the strongest cannot save us and the smartest cannot save us? Who is left to help us? Finally, they heard one small tiny voice, right? They heard one small tiny voice that said, let me try. All of the animals turned and looked around. Let me try. They said, who said that, right? Makwa and all of the rest of the animals started laughing. 
<laughs> As the animals parted, and there was this tiny little animal, okay? It had some ears like this kind of clipped on either side, one snaggle tooth in the front, a long tail in the back. What animal was this? It was a little tiny, they run around in New York City dragging pizzas down the subway. <laughs> It's a little tiny wajashk, a wajashk, a muskrat, right, with its webbed paws, was just stood on the edge of that log and said, let me try. All of the animals said, okay, okay, go on, wajash, you try to save us. Was just stood on that log, put their little swim cap on, right? put their little paws, rub them together, and took a Michael Phelps leap into the air, right? A big giant dive and started swimming and 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 swimming. Got that piece of earth, put it some in its little paw and started swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming all the way back to the top part of that water. And they say in this story, the story took place over the course of four days, just as the sun was setting. And what do you think all of the animals they were waiting for was Jashk, and they didn't see was Jashk when four days have passed. All of the animals said, oh no, we are doomed. We will have no good food to eat, no clean water to drink, and no land to live upon. And just as that sun was going down on the fourth day, they saw this tiny little blob-like shadow on the surface of the water. And all of those animals together, they went over and they saw this little shadow and they turned that shadow over. And who do you think was there? Da Wajashk, yes, little Wajashk, and they opened up its little tiny paw, and what do you think was in that paw? Yes, that little tiny piece, a speck of a key, right, in its paw. So they took that speck and they put it, as instructed from Gichimanidu, they took that um, piece of dust, as instructed, on the turtle's back, and there grew good food to eat, clean water to drink, and land to live upon. So it is said that we remember, right? Even the smallest among us have the voice, the strength to share in that great hoop, that great circle. So if you go back home and ask Grandmother Google, right, on Google Maps, you pull out, you will see Turtle Island, North, South America, here represented on the turtle's back. And that is how the story was told to me. Yaha hey, ya hey, ya ha hey, ya hey, ya ha hey, ya hey. Greetings. 
I'm Upalanyatet, also known as, as Ryan, and I'm a member of the Nanakoke Leni Lenape Tribal Nation. Thank you. Let's hear it. <laughs> Such an honor to be here tonight uh, with all my fellow community members. That's right. It is. It's great. You know, this, um, this island, Manahatta, that's right. <laughs> I love audience participation. Um, has been home and is home to so many members of many Native nations, and it's so important to us. And it's such an honor to be with them today. And even with all that, though, this island is indigenous to the Lenape people, of which my nation is a part of the many nations that make up Lenape Hoking. And here in the Great Hall, and, you know, as I was coming, I saw all these pictures, and I hear of all these wonderful speakers, amazing speakers that were here. And I didn't see any Lenape, unless I'm mistaken. If I am mistaken, please notify me. But I'm going to take this moment <laughs> to give my inaugural Lenape speech here in the Great Hall. <laughs> If you will, it's kind of my own take on the Atlantic acknowledgement. Uh, we've heard so many, many steps, many things that we all should take after tonight to help further the cause of Native Americans. But Atlantic acknowledgement, I, I do believe, is at least a good start. And so, as we heard earlier, the island we are currently standing on, Manahatta, is part of a larger nation, Lenape Hoking, home of the Lenape. They are one of the nations of first contact with Europeans and one of the oldest continuous democracies on Earth. Woo! Take that, Greece. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, this land belongs to the Creator, yet it was given to the Lenape to be stewards of. It was and continues to be their land to look after, as the many nations of the Lenape are still here. And while the Lenape have always welcomed people from all over the world to their shores, that invitation comes with a responsibility to treat everyone and everything on this land with respect. Now, one may ask themselves, why should we bother acknowledging whose land this is anyway? Right? I'm busy, time is money. Well, time can be measured in many different ways. Like, for instance, time can be measured in the thousands of years the Lenape have been here on this land, despite the physical, cultural, and environmental genocide that has taken place. And how have they survived all this time? One word. Sustainability. <laughs> this one word encapsulates the many factors that lead to a nation's survival. They include adaptation to the new cultures that come to one's shores, direct democracy, gender and racial equality, the neutralization of social class, preservation of one's environment, and remaining true to one's principles. These are the foundations of Lenape society and thus are a part of the land we are on and the country we now call the United States of America. Now, the United States is only approximately 250 years old, right? That's right. And as stewards of this land, we should all ask ourselves, are we on a sustainable path that is compatible with the land and culture that we are the inheritors of? Wanishi, thank you. Welcome to Project Golda. Your orientation will begin soon. To better prepare you for today, we ask that you close your eyes and imagine home. Your orientation specialist is Colonel Noksa. 
They are a Cherokee citizen with dark hair and dark eyes. Standing erect, they are five foot seven. They have been specifically chosen for you. And their voice sounds like this. You may open your eyes. Hello there. Welcome to Project Golda. I am Colonel Noxa, one of the seven. Thank you for joining us. Let them know ease called about the weather. On this beautiful day. I'm not one for idle chit chat, so let's cut to the chase, shall we? My job is to bring you up to speed, so I will tell you what you need to know. Some of it may be new, some of it you already know. All of it is top secret of the highest regard. Project Golda is named after Mary Golda Ross, August 1908 to April 2008. She was one of many firsts. First known Native American female engineer. First female engineer, native or non, at Lockheed Martin, and one of the 40 founding engineers, once again, only woman, of the Skunk Works Project. In the 60s, she was planning missions to Mars, Venus, and the outer planets in the 1960s. If you're a history buff, her great-great-grandfather was Chief John Ross, the chief during the forced removal of the Cherokee in what is known as the Trail of Tears. Much of her career was done in secret, as many of her projects are still today. That is our why, why Project Golda is here today. As you know, there have been major advancements in space travel, many potential colonies and resources. <sighs> Listen, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Depending on the expert, we have 20 to 30 more sustainable years on this planet. Last year, 15 species went extinct. This last decade was the hottest on record. It's unbelievable. I mean, did you know Saudi Arabia imports sand and camels from Australia? Saudi Arabia. And yes, people are scurrying to colonize outer planets, and it's not surprising the funders for space travel are settler capitalists, governments, oligarchs, the 1%. It's not surprising how quickly we forget history. That leads to another why. Why you are here. Yes. You. You survived. You are surviving. There, right there, something about you brightened. I can feel it. That pandemic and quarantine you survived showed us something. Did you know there was a nearly estimated 50% reduction in nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide? There was less consumption of our fossil fuels and a reduction in noise and water pollution. Do you know what that means? You can see the color of the water changing. Dolphins are returning to the coast of Bay of Bengal. Humans are becoming more self-sufficient and interdependent, realizing strength as individuals and power as community. I am one of the seven. You see, we believe that we should think in seven generations. Seven before and seven after. In our every deliberation, we must consider the impact of our decisions on the next seven generations. The great law of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. All of our choices have consequences and will affect the next seven generations. I am one of the seven. And so are you. You are one of the seven. Act accordingly. Our job is to continue the legacy of Mary Golda Ross. Oh no, we are not going into space. We are sending them into space. The colonizers. <laughs> we are indigenous to this planet. We are staying right here protecting life as we know it. 
because when I asked you to picture home, you pictured here, Earth. Welcome to Project Golda. The present is in your hands, and so is our future. Please send in the next group. There is still time.
¿Qué pasó? Oh, sí, yo. Oh, sí, yo. Yeah. 150 years ago, Red Cloud came before people on this very ground to plead for peace and justice, to show the people of New York as Manhattan to family, turtle to friends, a good and honest human being, not some distant and soulless enemy, no savage, but a human man. 150 years ago. And 195 years ago, that's a nickel short of 200 for you in the back. 195 years ago, not far south, in Philadelphia, PA, Elias Boudinot, born Galaginu Wadey, Buck Wadey to his friends and family, son of Cherokee made a similar appearance to ask for the same thing. And in the same way, he wanted the people of America's cities to see not an enemy, not a monster, but a human being. These are the words of Elias on that day. To those who are unacquainted with the manners, habits, and improvements of the aborigines of this country. The term Indian is pregnant with ideas, the most repelling and degrading. But such impressions, originating as they frequently do, from infant prejudices, although they hold too true when applied to some, do great injustices to many of this race of beings. Some there are, perhaps, even in this enlightened assembly, who at the bare sight of an Indian or at the mention of the name would throw back their imaginations oh, to ancient times, to the ravages of savage warfare, to the yells pronounced over the mangled bodies of women and children, thus creating an opinion inapplicable and highly injurious to those for whose temporal interest and eternal welfare I come to plead. What is an Indian? Is he not formed of the same materials with yourself? For, quote, of one blood, God created all the nations that dwell on the face of the earth, end quote. Though it be true that he is ignorant, that he is heathen, that he is a savage, yet is he no more than all others have been under similar circumstances? Eighteen centuries ago, what were the inhabitants of Great Britain? You hear, behold, an Indian. My kindred are Indians, and my fathers sleeping in the wilderness grave, they too were Indians. But I am not as my fathers were. Broader means and nobler influences have fallen upon me. Yet I was not born as thousands are, in a stately dome amid the congratulations of the great. For on a little hill in a lonely cabin overspread by the forest oak, I first drew my breath. And in a language unknown to learned and polished nations, I learnt to lisp my fond mother's name. And in after days, I have had greater advantages than most of my race. And I now stand before you, delegated by my native country to seek her interest, to labor for her respectability, and by my public efforts to assist in raising her to an equal standing with other nations of the earth. The time has arrived when speculations and conjectures as to the practicability of civilizing the Indians must forever cease. A period is fast approaching when the stale remark, do what you will, an Indian will always be an Indian, must be placed no more in speech. It needs not the display of language to prove to the minds of good men 
that Indians are susceptible of attainments necessary to the formation of society. It needs not the power of argument on the nature of man to silence forever the remark that it is the purpose of the Almighty that the Indians should be exterminated. It needs only that the world should know what we have done in the last few years to foresee what yet we may do with the assistance of our white brethren and that of the common parent of us all. There is, in Indian history, something very melancholy and which seems to establish a mournful precedent for the future events of the few sons of the forest now scattered over this vast continent. We have seen everywhere the poor Aborigines melt away before the white population. I merely speak of the fact without at all referring to the cause. We have seen, I say, one family after another, one tribe after another, nation after nation pass away until only a few solitary creatures are left to tell the sad story of this extinction. Shall this precedent be followed? I ask you, shall red men live? Or shall they be swept away from the earth? With you and this public at large, the decision chiefly rests. Must we perish? Must we all, like the unfortunate Creeks, victims of the unchristian policy of certain persons, go down in sorrow to their grave? They hang upon your mercy as to a garment. Will you push them from you? Or will you save them? Let humanity answer. Those were the words of Elias. And 195 years later, in a world Elias, Buck, Weighty Boudinot, and his audience never dared dream of, in a world Red Cloud and the people of New York on the turtle couldn't have comprehended, a world in which technology and industry has splattered and poured and hardened over every inch of these lands, offering sweetness and slow death like so much magic shell over an ever-melting ice cream. An ever-melting diaspora of mingling multi-ethnicity in which the sons of the forest have intertwined red and brown and black and yellow and white and whatever else may come. 195 years later, from a supposed society in a body more than 50,000 years old, dressed in the garments of technological advancement that reach beyond our planets and star, the children of the sons of the forest are still waiting for humanity's answer. And as it limps out of humanity's mouth, as limp and unintelligible as a toddler's first lie, I tell you, the children of the forest wait no longer. No, we have grown and lived, and you have all been brought into our world as we have made the answer ourselves. In blood that reaches back 200, 2,000, 10,000, 50,000 years and sings forward 50,000 years into the future an unending song. We will always be here. Well, don't.
Mochi Maguetch, relatives, friends. This story is one of the oldest stories that is told across Turtle Island, and it speaks about this great hooper, this great circle of life. So the whole world is in your hands, you heard Sage earlier talking about choices, activation, liberation, regeneration, and all this beautiful wisdom and artistry from these indigenous relatives. Well, I'd like to share with you the great design that we're all talking about this evening, and it starts with this circle of life, this great hoop. And it was said once, as the story was told to me, that there was this young person, and they were about this tall, and they had real dark brown hair with this tiny little braid in the back. And the story took place a long time ago in that young person's village. And at that time, their brothers and sisters were fighting and calling each other names. Aunties, uncles, cousins, sisters, brothers. Everyone was fighting. And this young person, they didn't know what to do, so they started crying. Bah! They said, my brothers and sisters are fighting and calling each other names, right? Aunties, uncles, grandpas, everyone at that time, okay? And so this young person kept crying and crying and crying. They ran off into the forest and they put their head down on a rock and they started crying and crying and crying. Bah! They said, they said in this story, sheets of tears were falling down from that young person's face. And finally, Gichimani, do great mystery, heard this young person crying and looked over the forest, okay, looked over the forest and saw this tiny little head with this little tiny braid in the back. And Gichimani, do this great mystery, went down to that young person and said, hey, what's going on, right? That young person took their hands high up in the air like this and said, Ah, oh, get your money, do. I'm just having a bad day. <laughs> Holy wah! <laughs> Holy wah! Get your money, do said. Yes, hola, whoa, holy cow. And handed the young person one of those hoops, one of those circular shaped objects. And the young person took it and looked at it and looked at it and said, what's this for? And so Gichimani do this great mystery said to make as many things in nature as you can. Make as many things and your people will become stronger each year. So that young person gathered red willow that grows by the water, just like out here on the Hudson and East River, and started fashioning thousands and thousands of these hoops. And they started dancing and dancing away, making all these beautiful trees and plants and flowers and animals and butterflies, things that they saw in nature. And they took that dance and they went back to their village and they were dancing and dancing away, recognizing all the most beautiful things from a tiny blade of grass to a soaring eagle. In the village, their brothers and sisters were still there, the families, the relatives, fighting with their fists in the air. And for one single moment... For one single moment, when they saw that young person with all of those hoops around them dancing for joy, bringing back to the village, to the people, they dropped their fists and they said, Hole wa! Hole wa! Let me try that dance. So each one of the brothers, the sisters, the aunties, the uncles, the cousins grabbed one single hoop from that young person and started dancing and dancing away, making all these beautiful trees and plants and flowers and animals and butterflies, things that they saw in nature. They started to change the design. They started to change the design and take flight. So... This dance was given to me when I was about seven years old. I was one of those um, young people that like to probably bounce off these pillars that you see tonight in the form of birch trees. I was given a hoop and I started with one hoop and started dancing and dancing away and forming different shapes to tell this story. And so this is dedicated tonight to the indigenous people of past, present, and future to all of my friends and relatives pouring their hearts and souls out tonight in this great hoop, this great circle of life, to my family out there on the Wi-Fi's and the Wi-Fi's, the interwebs, the great, you know, worldwide web of indigenous people, the defenders who couldn't be here tonight, 
the people that are fighting the both psychological, emotional, and spiritual um, you know, fight this evening, as well as celebrating on the dance floors uh, in digiqueering space and time. This dance is dedicated to you, the chosen family of all people connected in this great hoop or this great circle of life. So here we go, without further ado, we are going to hoop it up, and I must, I must, everybody sit back, relax, make sure your tray table is in upright locked position. Okay, haven't heard that in a while. We are going to hoop it up this evening. As soon as I take off my thousands of year old beadwork made by my mother this evening, because she would not like it to get ruined. And as an indigenous queer person, you take care of your wardrobe. <laughs> Here we are, Auntie Dawn.
Nick Letch. Thank you, Evan. Oh, a microphone falls from the sky at Kupalumi. <laughs> the sacred microphone, miigwech. Like links in a chain, right? We're asking folks to, um, you know, forge new pathways together, right? On that journey so you can cross over those messy situations, those messy times, those things, right? So that you can... You can find community, right? You can build your own sacred circle, friends, family, relatives. We gathered here tonight with you all, guests, as well as before. We are here all day planning for you to be here with us today so that we can form a much larger nest. For some of us, this is a safe haven, a home, right, of chosen family. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah, you got it. I see some hole was in the back. Big nods back there. Right. And with that, you all can earn your wings of wisdom, your wings of knowledge, right? Because um, it is said in this dance, you know, when you form that, you know, everyone's included in that rainbow. So mad shout out to my Digiqueers and Glitterized family out there, right? You have your rainbow. All the colors, all the people. All the celestials connected together. Miigwech, everyone. This is a gift to be here with you all. A gift to my family um, back home. Hello, along the road, the journey. And um, let the celebrations continue here and beyond. Miigwech, and I'm going to pass it to um, Auntie Dawn over here to give us some good medicine closing out. Yeah. <laughs> Descent. I am of Mohawk descent. My native name, my Ungwenhungwe name, is Yelihobwatz, which means she digs deeply into the earth to learn. And I know that I always learn new things from our many nations. So many were represented here tonight, and I hope you did too. It was a fun night, right? <laughs> I'm so grateful to Cooper Union, to the Cooper Union, for keeping the conversation of learning going. And I hope that there are many more days that every day can be an Indigenous People's Day, not just one day a year, but every day could be Indigenous People's Day. <laughs> so it feels fantastic to be with you, and I'm going to teach you a little Mohawk word that uh, the teaching for this word could take years, so I won't give you the whole teaching, but it's got me gunlio. So let's try that. Got me gunlio. And that means with a good mind, to keep it really short, to have a good mind. And I feel like for you to even be interested in coming tonight, to be indigenous people arriving, surviving every day, for every person in this room with a big heart, an open heart, and a good mind, that we've come together, and that is an amazing moment, and I am very grateful to all of you. So this song that we're about to do to end today is called Ngwe Hungwe, which are the original peoples, the first peoples, and it is about that we are alive today. There was so much talent tonight, determination, uh, compassion, and the future, hope for the future. So that's what this song is about. I hope you enjoy it. We never died, we never will. We're not extinct, we live here still. Watch us, hear us, feel us grow. What we know, you do not know. Some of our children did not return. From unmarked graves, there's more to learn. Stripped of clothing, hair, and name. Beaten 
last but wholesome cake. As long we are here. Lovers, lawyers, laborers, artists, athletes, architects, counselors, chiefs, and clan mothers. Traditions guide us, set us free. In many worlds we live so well. With all our stories not tell. everyone yeah hey yeah hey yeah hey 